how many doses have you already got on hand and produced? The moment we are producing every single slot here in Tübingen, which is the core unit, which we are multiplying with our uh, CMO network all over Europe. Uh, so there are tremendous times we are multiplying those in order to get much more capacity, which obviously is needed. And so as we are producing this at the moment uh, at risk, certainly because we're waiting for the data, only these can be uh, distributed after approval. And this is what we are doing at the moment. But uh, even though you're waiting for approval, I assume you've already produced millions of doses and have them on hand ready to go once that approval is given. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So uh, the, the first dosages will immediately release, be released when, when we've got approval. That's right. And, and how many have you got ready to go? We are not talking about this one uh, at the moment because there, the, these will be then distributed within the EU and there is this uh, confidentiality where we're not talking about. Got it. Well, but you do have production targets for the year and I wonder where you stand on those. What, what do you now think that you can make in 2021? Our goal is to produce 300 million dosages in uh, 2021 within our network. And then you have to see how many of these dosages can be released because they're a release uh, process, which is certainly to be accelerated uh, then there as well. And for 2022, we are planning to produce uh, 1 billion doses. And uh, in terms of the variants, um, how do you expect that to affect, well, the phase three results, for example? That's a very good question. So we don't know at the moment, uh, but this is exactly the reason why we filed an amendment to our clinical trial that we want to catch all the variants, so any variant. Uh, and by that, we have then everyone who catches within the trial, uh, COVID vaccine is getting uh, uh, sequenced so that we know exactly which strain is it that uh, really affected the subject in question. And by that, we, we, uh, we will see then at the end of the day when we deep line the study, which variants really did do what to the efficacy of the uh, vaccine. And uh, therefore uh, we are running this clinical trial and we see that the attack rate, so the in incidence of, of the different variants, especially in uh, Latin America is quite high as it is in Europe as well. Do you expect to be competitive? I mean, is your efficacy rate, do you think going to be, um, the same levels as we've seen with Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Yeah, at the time, uh, Moderna and uh, BioNTech, Pfizer were running the trials. Uh, there were certainly not that many um, uh, variants, if any, uh, at the time. So, therefore, uh, we will see how how these variants, as we uh, discussed, will affect the efficacy. But certainly, there is a high hope that our efficacy is also quite high. But we will see. Uh, it's a double-blinded study, as you can imagine. There. We are very much looking forward to have these data in the hand rather soon. In terms of um, production and distribution, wh what kind of numbers do you have earmarked for, say, Germany? Yeah, this falls within this uh, EU contract uh, which we have signed uh, uh, end of last year. And there is an internal distribution key uh, of the different countries uh, which take out of the 225 million dosages which are fixed contracted. And then with an option of 180 million. And how this is then distributed in the EU, we don't know yet that for sure. And um, the uh, distribution key is confidential. And uh, But there are then individual delivery contracts with the different member states. What about other regions, for example, markets in Asia and South America? Are you already pursuing contracts there? We are in negotiation with quite a lot of um, national governments, but also with organizations like uh, COVAX uh, for, for additional dosages. Uh, certainly, the, the closer we are coming now to the finish line, the higher certainly also the interest is because there is obviously a huge need for vaccines to be distributed in the entire world. And yes, we are talking to different governments. Yes. I have some fraternity brothers in Tübingen who uh, mentioned one day they saw Elon Musk walking around the Marktplatz. Um, you clearly were, were at least meeting with him. Have you thought of any forays into the U.S. market? Previously, you'd, you'd declined. Yes, uh, that's right. For our current uh, construct, um, CVNCOV, um, uh, 
there, there is not huge demand in the US because US government already very early last year uh, made their contracts with the different players. So the, the US market is well covered. So therefore there was no demand, but certainly we are working certainly also on the second generation and think about multivalent uh, vaccines. And uh, here we are certainly together with our uh, partner GSK with, with, uh, with whom we are developing uh, the second generation uh, COVID vaccines, we are certainly talking to the US as well, which is a very important market. Yesterday, we saw reports that Pfizer said a third dose may be necessary months later. How do you envision the CureVac vaccine working? Yeah, it's an interesting question because all what we do, so not only CureVac, but overall, this is all act, uh, happening real time. So we don't know what is really the the length of the protection the different vaccines are uh, uh, giving you. And therefore, yes, with mRNA vaccines, you can boost again uh, uh, with the third shot. And uh, we have seen this also in uh, uh, trials. And uh, as you can see that even the boosting of, um, of a vaccine, which is not based on mRNA, uh, is possible. So therefore, the technology is exactly that the power of the technology that you can boost. And if it is necessary, you can do and we will do it. Yes. How do you envision this working in the end? I mean, I get my flu vaccine, for example, every year, um, a new booster. Is that going to be how we deal with COVID as well? We will see. I think uh, at least I did completely underestimate when uh, um, COVID turned up. Uh, how long this will stay. And uh, I think we have got the technology and the mechanisms now to tackle this one as well. If COVID is going to stay, we have to think about tomorrow as well. If it is going to stay as a, let's say, seasonal infection, uh, is, which is coming. So we have got with the mRNA technology exactly to tackle this one. Also, we have to see, and this is one of the next sub-studies, what we are starting, how is a COVID vaccine interacting with what you said, a flu shot, for example, which you get every year. And so these are the questions to be answered, but they can be answered. You had uh, 1.3 billion in cash on hand at the end of the year. To me, that sounds like a lot of money, but I imagine with you, especially producing on spec right now, that must feel a little bit tight. How are you thinking about raising funding? Yeah, it is certainly for a biotech company. Our budgets look completely different than they uh, looked years ago, as you can imagine, because the building up of the um, of the manufacturing certainly is uh, very expensive. But again, what we said before, it is very worth to do it because these manufacturing units are producing mRNA, not only for COVID vaccine, but also for the variants or any other mRNA, what you do. So it's it's well invested money. And uh, exactly what you said, it's a, a, as it is a huge investment, which we have to do. Uh, we raised in the beginning of this year in a follow on uh, financing via NASDAQ, uh, 517 million. So this is adding to uh, what, what we have. And then certainly we, we are expecting and have high hopes that our vaccine will get approved. And then certainly the sales of the product will start as well. You, you mentioned your partnership with GlaxoSmithKline. Are you thinking about more or deeper partnerships with Big Pharma in order to increase financing? Well, the partnerships, uh, first of all, are really with regard to developing products. So in, the in mid last year, we started a rather platform uh, technology uh, transaction with uh, with uh, GSK to explore the entire potential of mRNA in the field of vaccines and infectious disease. And now we added also COVID uh, to it, which really gives, you know, there is a synergies in these kind of activities with the different pathogens we are working on in order to have really a platform to scale up also uh, than uh, the uh, technology uh, to, to tackle these kind of virus infections. And yes, then you're right. The next big thing will be oncology, really where mRNA is going to play a role. And uh, this is certainly, we are talking with pharma companies here as well. We have got clinical trial in uh, melanoma running and we'll start other clinical trials in oncology as well. And there certainly the pharma partnerships are essential to, to get the synergy, their expertise in order to develop these products, which you can be uh, building up on, on mRNA technology. What is... Um, the most promising next use. Is oncology the most promising next use for mRNA? Can you see um, using it for HIV or other viruses? 
Well, certainly for other infectious diseases, virus infections, uh, that's exactly what we're working with uh, GSK on. Uh, but, but then in another area next to infectious disease and prophylactic vaccines, uh, definitely in oncology, because here also in oncolytic vaccines, you're asking the same questions more or less. Can you get expression? Can you um, uh, generate uh, an immune response to it? And then you're certainly putting certain other questions on top, which is, for example, can you break the immune tolerance of, of the cancer in question? And uh, we have seen this is possible, and therefore, yes, it will be then the next area to tackle. And then a bit further along, perhaps, it's the protein therapies, which you also, you know, if, if a protein, for whatever reason, is missing in your body, you really can code this on mRNA as well and uh, give the body the message in order to produce exactly this protein. So this will be then uh, along the lines, then also one of the potentials which you really can use mRNA for.